Those are all options that can be done. Um, I don't know if that answers you specific enough of what you're talking about for implementation because it's still, when we look at the different components of it, we suggest that all of the components within TCMPC and the system be utilized in the way that it's rolled out. So one of the questions that was discussed earlier was the YAG. So there's, an, there's a suggestion at the year at a glance and how to be able to bundle the units. And so can you take a year at a glance and move a unit from six weeks one to the six, six weeks? You could do it, but know that that has implications to every series within the system. So it's not our recommendation in your first years of implementation to change the system from what it is. It's done with purpose and it's done through research and it's created that way. So we suggest to roll it out in fidelity of how the program is and provide the support to your teachers on how to use the system. How you so choose to roll that out at what levels and to what degree of what program, that's a decision of an LEA that we can work with y'all in that guidance. I don't know, does that give you more clarity? Can, can, I, you, add, can I add a can, little bit? Uh, Dr. Yeah. Alvin asked you, our, you can our add Our initial to that. plan, kind of if we chunk this into phases, our phase one plan is really for us, that's why they did a prorated uh, uh, amount for us to consider um, that was under 25,000, I believe it was 19,000. And, and that's the amount that we have currently in our budget to have CNI, the core team, including bilingual ESL, to, to look at it, to analyze it, to work through it, to work with their team on the best way to roll it out, which could include August, so we've already booked some time in August to do overviews for our teachers in the system, but then ongoing chunks or phases that would include more in-depth work. And so part of that is we need to learn it very well first before we make a, a uh, set in stone decision on how to roll it out. So this initial plan is really for CNI to learn it like the back of our hand. Then come back when we give you the budget um, for next year, which would need approval, the, the rolling out plan. By that time, we will have had time to work with the experts at Region 20 to study it ourselves. And so this 90 day, this three month, um, uh, I guess plan A would be our, our initial rollout. And I think one thing that I wanna to add to that is that in no way, shape or form are we suggesting to throw out the great work that's already occurred by your curriculum team. There's a place for that relevancy within the system. So there is a place where you can customize the district inside the district resources and you can find where that aligns to the year at a glance so that the work that's been done is honored and it's being able to kept true with what's already occurred. Cause you don't want to have a regression, you want progression to occur. So honor the fact of what has occurred, be true to what is a value add, and align it to what the system already has. And then you can start moving forward to shifting to that rigor with inside the classroom. Mr. And I wanted to ask you, Dr. Hall, and because uh, I know I talked to Ms. Both about it uh, briefly, but how does this kind of go along with, um, with Edgephoria? That's a great, great question, and we actually asked that at one of our presentations because we had them come talk. Right now, Eduphoria is a depository of uh, lessons. So a school will um, work together in professional learning communities or departments, develop lessons, and upload them into Eduphoria. And that really is all it does. It, it's a depository for lessons. There was a list of all the different resources that help support lesson design, lesson delivery, that how piece that still can honor a lot of those lessons. But we know that everything that's being put into Eduphoria may or may not be of quality. That, that's really up to the school and to the teacher teams. This would be a district-wide curriculum management system where the highest quality lessons would be in there. So everyone could access them. You could access the assessments that are aligned to the TEKS. The, the resources that they have there help teachers, help guide the teachers through that lesson design process. So there will be a little more um, quality control. And really, Eduphoria doesn't allow that in any shape or form right now. We'd have to go through and look at every single lesson submitted by every single teacher at every single school. So really they help the principal monitor lesson at their campus and that's really its greatest gift right now. 
Now, the assessments are on both Eduphoria and will be part of this as well, right? So they, we share the assessment bank. Correct. Um, in Eduphoria, um, and, and what uh, Dr. Harl was talking about is the forethought piece of Eduphoria. So that's an application within Eduphoria. Eduphoria has six applications, and so that's one piece. The other piece uh, is AWARE, and that's your data management system where you can see um, state results as well as local benchmarks if I were to upload my data and analyze them that way. So within AWARE, you can have access to the TX resource system unit assessments, unit items to create the assessment in there. By, and so you'd go through the same process, process you'd build it the same way, you'd just choose uh, unit one, uh, that item bank would be turned on for you, if you will, um, on our end, once you purchase um, the commitment, and then you have access to those items in AWARE. It pretty much uh, goes in line with what I was thinking, and uh, the main thing is obviously Edge of Four is used for the focus on the data, so in analyzing what the kids are doing and how they're doing. So if we can, I guess, keep that component within each other and kind of work with it, I mean, I'm sure it's going to be beneficial. Oh, absolutely. It's it, it's the data analysis piece. It is, does not have a curriculum um, embedded in it or it is not meant to be um, for that use. So I just wanted to summarize, too. We're not looking at replacing Eduphoria for those reasons. The forethought, again, is the depository for the lessons, but the, the gift that the data piece of that brings in AWARE is, is we need both, actually. And you can take the depository um, that you're speaking of, Dr. Um, Harl, and you can align those two pieces. Once you find which ones have been what you consider to be exemplar lessons, then those could be uploaded within the district resource side to be able to utilize those as well. And the assessments can be chosen to, I'm so sorry, the assessments can be chosen at what level and access you want those to be inside the district. Sure. Yeah, we support both of those as well. So we can be close. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. My question okay. is, Dr. Harl, with a comment you just made as far as this transition, because my understanding with the program is we want to go in a different direction with our math program next year. So I think this is part of the solution, I believe. Yes, no. So it, it certainly it certainly can be. We do need lessons, not just in math, though. We need district wide high district wide high quality lessons in in all four content areas. Yeah. But it, so when you so when you said about implementation, it's going to be a, a slow transition. If we're going with a different math program next year, shouldn't we be a little bit more expeditiously when it comes to, to implementing this program, at least for next year, when it comes to the math component? Well, and I, I, I want to be really clear on something. What, what we're looking at is a, a curriculum management, online curriculum management system, and also looking at a, a math learning program, if, if I'm catching the question right, to replace Reasoning Mind, right? Reasoning Mind or any program, let's say we went with um, River Deep. River Deep won't feed into this because it's blended learning. It's another online support system for kids. We're going to look at, we want both. I understand. <laughs> you see what I know I'm saying? Yes. Okay. I got it. Thank you. Okay. Can I add one more thing? Sure. You probably have enough of our information. But because of what you just said, um, we are discussing a partnership with Learning List to be able to take and look and evaluate the resources that districts have. They actually have already vetted over 1,500 resources, and they tell you if it's 100% aligned to the standards, and we see that as a way to fast track the actual alignment to resources that districts are already purchasing with their IMA and be able to align to TCMPC. Because what's happening, I'm just gonna say the elephant in the room, is that districts purchase you, you know, textbooks and other resources with IMA and those sometimes become the curriculum. 
and and because you have this doesn't mean that it's aligned to the state standard and it doesn't mean that it's the rigor of what the star assessment is so you don't want to give up your curriculum for an, a textbook over here so we're trying to form a partnership with learning lists to be able to who's already vetted over 1500 and they'll take the request of a district once they buy into it if you have something that hasn't been vetted and then be able to bring in district leadership to be able to do the hard work saying this resource fits with this year to glance at this time and we say that that's a great resource to use and so then it's taking that work and it's taking off the mystifying of what can we use and what can't we use and that should be something that's discussed all right cool thank you if there are no further questions. Thank you so much, Sorry ladies. we went over our no. eight minutes. It's okay. You guys are awesome, though. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate your time, and Thank congratulations for all the great things y'all have going on. Great. Very Thank impressed. You. Thank you. All right, moving on to item 4C, report gifts accepted on behalf of the board per policy CDC local. Mr. Madrigal. Yes, Mr. Chair. We have for, for communications from Frost Insurance for the cultural arts coming up here in, on May 9th for a donation of monetary donation of $500. Uh, we also have for Terwell's Middle School for Michael Ramirez for supplies for $200. We have Harndo High School, the Harndo Alumni Basketball Association and scholarships for $3,000. We have another one for Terwell's Middle School from the Bear County Arts and Cultural Fund for supplies for $400. Then non-monetary donations we had here to our special education department for again, our recent symposium uh, from various donators for gift cards, food, and for a total value of $895, for a grand total for Harndo ISD for March of 16, of $4,995. Thank you, Mr. Madrigal. <clears throat> Moving on to item 4D, Building Committee Report. Ms. Carrillo's not here, so Mr. Soto, if you can do that for us. Yes, sir, Mr. Bundes. The Building Committee report Thursday, March 10th, 2016 was called to order by Mr. Oresti at 513. Board members present was Mr. Bundis and Ms. Carillo. Staff present was Mr. Madrigal, Superintendent, myself, Woody Wilson, Legal, and Mila Perez, the recorder. Jasmine Engineering staff members present, Jasmine Zia, Zima, Coy Ballard, Fermin Mendez, Paul Molina, and Les Heinen. The building committee uh, went over the bond 2015 programming update. Presentation was given by Jasmine Azima regarding the different options of construction and costs for Carabelle and Vesto Elementary Schools. They also presented different options and costs for parking lots at Terwells, Leal, and Central Office. Both presentations were just informative and its programming phase. No action was taken. The next item on the agenda was the CMAR, Carabell Elementary and Vestal Elementary. Rankings for the CMAR have been submitted and the committee agreed by consensus to take to full board for approval. Security project was the next item on the agenda. The project is in its final stages and nearing the completion stage. Gillette Foundation update. Jasmine Engineering staff gave a PowerPoint presentation. It was stated that the cost on this project has gone up to 5.7 million. Ms. Tuodesti asked if they could just repair that one pier and take care of the drainage. Mr. Bundis asked if they could just have a contractor come and do the repairs. The project is up for rebid and legal stated that the new RFP for the CMAR would be ready to post the following day. Committee agreed that bringing in a CMAR would be a better opportunity and would revisit the different options. The next item on the agenda was district property. And that was the gentleman that, that presented earlier. The district has been in contact with a developer and that is interested in purchasing a total of 100 acres near the most complex. And they came to present earlier today. The meeting was adjourned at 7.20, sir. Thank you, Mr. Soto. I have a question. Okay, Ms. Caceres. I have a question actually for Mr. Soto, only because we're on this item right now for Gillette, and I know that it's been a very, very lengthy one that has come up in several agendas throughout several meetings. But um, my understanding from this is that we went out for another RFP again, for another bid to yes, see if we could have somebody do the work on Gillette and see yes, what we come back it's with. It's going out for bids, yes ma'am. Okay, when did that go out, sir? It should be, uh, it's, in our, it's on our staff's hand, and it's gonna be turned over to legals for final viewing. 
Oh, okay. So it still hasn't gone out? It Not hasn't yet. been completed, it hasn't gone out yet? No, ma'am. Okay, so it's in the process of going out. We changed from a two-step process to a one-step process. Instead of so an RFQ, it went to an RFP? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, I guess my question also is, I don't know if this is something we can discuss right now, but whether or not we've looked in may, into maybe not even touching Gillette so that we can save money and maybe just doing a whole new Gillette, considering what these gentlemen just told us to, the growth that we may be getting here in the near future instead of even, so we can just save money. That's just an idea and something that I think that we actually, might be able to look into. Can I comment to that? Sure, sir. Actually, that was, that's what Mr. Oresta's comment was when he was reading it. Maybe going back and looking at it again, maybe just do the one peer repair to see if they're willing to do that and then maybe down the road look at something like you just suggested. So that was this kind of discussed, maybe not to that extent, but but it was to some extent. If you want to add to that, Mr. Oresta. Also, this isn't on the agenda, so we just need to be careful getting oh. off the topic. I didn't know. If, that's why I was asking okay. if we could are we, actually. Are we still good on it, it or no? Well, I mean, we are getting to discussion on this item. It's not right, on the agenda. Then we'll go to. I, I think I can comment on as far as what I stated at the building committee, correct? Yes. It pertains to the minutes? Yes. Um, I won't answer a question, but what, uh, just to, to elaborate a little bit on, on the agenda or the, the minutes of the meeting, uh, I. I did bring forward the thought of, of possibly doing just the repair on the one pier by putting the two piers in place that we initially discussed, re repair the sump pump and the drainage and leave it alone for, for right now and then at the next possibly pass a bond in the near future and as we expand or if need be we build an entire new Gillette depending on how it holds up after doing that repair. That's so what, that's so what, what I'll think. do, Ms. Gusset, is I'll talk to Ms. Carrillo. So next time we have a building committee meeting, maybe we can, at that time, discuss this, since we're kind of off topic. Okay. Any further questions on this? All right. Thank you so much. Moving on with consent. Is there any items that I would like to pull? We have items A through E. Mr. Chair, I was going to move to approve Item A through E. Okay, we have a motion to approve items A through E. Mr. I have a second on that. I'll second, Mr. Yes, motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve items A through E. All those in favor? Those against, ayes have it. Six, I'm supposed to say it right, six zero. Yeah. <laughs> All right, moving on to uh, individual items. Item 6A, consider and take possible action to approve the final rankings for selections of a CMAR for the Carabelle and Vestal Elementary projects and authorize the superintendent to negotiate and execute a contract. Yes, Mr. Chair, at this Mr. time. Mr. Madigal. Yes, Mr. Chair, at this time, uh, have Mr. Soto go ahead and, and uh, refer to himself and staff to uh, bring forward a recommendation, Mr. Soto. Mr. Madigal, at this time, I'd like to call uh, our program manager, Ms. Uh, Jasmine Azima and her staff. Um, basically, uh, there was a committee that ranked uh, out of five companies that has submitted their responses down to two. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know how you can move this without a clicker. They just handed it to me. This is, this is forward. Um, as far as the timeline goes, um, these, these this is not, um, this is for the programming, Mr. Soto. I think we need to have the ranking one. Right, it's, it's, in our, it's in our part. Please. Okay, so basically from uh, the scores, uh, a company that got ranked number one was Whiting, 
Turner. Their headquarters from Baltimore. They have a local office here for the last 10 years. The second company that has been ranked is Cadence McShane. Uh, that is not as uh, length of time in uh, San Antonio, but they're also a good firm. Those are the two that will be receiving request for, for, for proposal, I apologize, should the district approve these two ranked companies as part of the uh, selection process. In the selection process was Mr. Soto, Mr. Rodriguez, Carl Blakeney, myself, and another staff member from Jasmine Engineering who scored the uh, two. From what I recall, um, the number one was uh, substantially higher in number than number two but both will be receiving requests for proposal. So can I have a motion before we go have any discussion to approve those guys as number one and two? I move to accept uh, the rankings as is. We have a motion. I'll go ahead and second that for uh, st starting discussion. Any questions from anybody? Ms. Cáceres. Okay. So right now, my understanding is that we're going to be tearing down all of Vesto. Is that correct? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, one of the options that has been looked into is replacement of uh, Vesto, which we'll be presenting next on the programming options and facilities. There's been several options looked at, and that's one of them. Yes, ma'am, but this is not about really replacement as it is about qualification of the contractors okay. that have applied was, that's yeah, to that's, be considered. That's, that's a question for the next agenda item. Okay. This is just who, who's gonna do the work. So right now we're just trying to prove who's gonna do the work and the approval was done by staff. You said yourself, which is Mr. Blakeney, Mr. Soto. Mr. Rodriguez. Mr. Rodriguez. Herself and Corey Ballard. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Sir, can we move this? Well, Is there any other questions on the on the rankings? Mr. Moreno has a question, go ahead. Uh, yes, and then uh, I guess with, I know as you're kind of going through the technology there, uh, Mrs. Zima, in, in regards to the CMAR, um, you, have you uh, worked with these uh, people before, one or two? Have you had uh, relation, uh, business with them before? No, the only company that had applied that the district has done business with and Jasmine and Jing has had extensive amount of experience with has been Guido Brothers but they were not shortlisted, they were ranked number three. And um, the staff decided, along with us, to just go for the top two. If in case uh, numbers or GMP, which is down the road that would be coming up, would not get into an agreement, you can always go to the rank number three, which is Guido Brothers, who did the concession restrooms for Holland Dill Independent School District for Bond 2009. As far as working with these two companies, they're fairly new in the K-12 arena in San Antonio, Texas. However, they are not new to K-12 arena nationwide. Uh, Whiting Turner is a very big company. But I have interviewed them, I've talked to them. They have good personalities and very team players. Absolutely. Mr. Montani, no? Mr. Quesada, we're all good? Mr. Chair. Mr. 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 Zima, uh, just remind me the other jobs that um, Whiting and Tumor have done here in Bear County? They have done work with Brooks, I believe. Um, they have, in their re responses, uh, they have worked in, around, but they haven't done any K-12 in San Antonio, Whiting Turner. And in, in Texas? In Texas, they have done some work. I don't have their qualification statement right in front of me, but it was a lengthy, lengthy one, and they have done quite a bit. They're in the top, uh, numbers along with Turner and Zachary and other construction companies. Thank you. Okay. If there's no more further discussion, all those in favor of accepting the rankings by staff? 
with winding turning construction as number one and Candice machine construction as, as number two. All those in favor? Those against, ayes have it. All right, moving on to the next item, which is item 6B, consider and take appropriate action to approve the options presented for the Carabelle and Vesto Elementary projects and authorize the superintendent to negotiate and execute the contract. I guess we'll, we'll take, are we doing a, a, smart, a short presentation on this, Mr. Madrigal, Mr. Soto? Uh, Mr. Chair, yes. what we've done is, uh, and uh, we've asked Mr. Soto again to coordinate with, with Jasmine Engineer to kind of uh, uh, provide a presentation, maybe not as lengthy as the building committee, because we had three board members at the building committee, but then allow the board to answer any questions they may have after the presentation. So, Mr. Soto? <clears throat> yes, sir. Uh, as uh, directed Ms. Azima to just get to the nuts and bolts of, of the options, uh, Clearly, so uh, each board member will be able to understand what is going on and, and we will be able to answer any questions. Because it is a 45 uh, page uh, PowerPoint. Right. Uh, just to basically summarize, for the members of the board who were not in the building committee, there has been uh, several options looked into for each school campus. There are some AutoCAD drawings and Revit drawings that are mounted on the foam as it's in my left. Those are various options that uh, our firm has looked into. I want to make sure that I emphasize this is programming budget, this is not bids. So therefore, bids are going to be received from contractors toward to the end as such is called guaranteed maximum price, meaning that the contractor will take a risk for giving you a price based on 75% completion drawings. The timeline for this programming was we began on November the 17th forward after uh, we were selected. Uh, our contract was signed on November the 18th, and we, which was an amendment to the existing contract. Those are the date that is uh, stated above. The purpose of doing facility programming is that the district wouldn't have the same issues and problems that you see in other school districts where you have cost overrun as a surprise when the bids are arrived. What we are stating for the record is when the facility assessment was done on August of 19th of 2014. I'm gonna stop you for a second because there's a couple of us that don't have the full PowerPoint. I don't have it either. They just downloaded and they're gonna get to Just give us, a sec just hold on for a few minutes. Yeah, we got it now. <laughs> we have some board members had it, but we had two. I was trying to meet up, I was calling you off. A hard copy. So I'm going to get it You have yours? You don't? Okay, they're going to do yours. No. Those guys have the end either. Right. Yeah. They have it now. Did you have it? We just didn't want to know. Subsequently, it was for Mr. Ovestes. We may want to pay that. I didn't even notice because. He's the last one.
guys, we're going to go ahead and begin again. All right. Okay, can yeah, we go? If that would continue, please. Okay. <laughs> Why is this happening? Golly, this is unbelievable. Okay, so basically we discussed about the day. Today was, of course, the full presentation of the programming. Um, what I wanted to make sure that I emphasize again, we did a facility assessment in August of 2014 with a notion that it would go for bond referendum in November, designed to begin and go to construction within a year from the time the facility assessment was done. On the facility assessment book that we have brought, tab four and five specifically specifies that notation about construction beginning within a year which is what we have done all along. We've always designed projects for you within six, nine months and going out to bed within a year. That did not uh, materialize just because of bond being postponed to May and of 2015 and subsequent to that, we didn't come on board until November. Since mid-November forward, facility programming has been um, 
uh, implemented with uh, various different options. Uh, the drawing that you see on the screen is mostly an aerial map of the Carol Bell. There has been many options studied for this particular uh, facility. Uh, what basically you're seeing on the screen is beyond the facility programming, we've moved into almost a schematic design completion. Uh, this is what normally architects do when they propose a schematic design and planning of how the site adaptation, utilities, grading, drainage codes gets implemented. That said, the other drawing that you're seeing on the screen is an existing uh, first floor and second floor plan. Uh, I'm going as fast as I can. The square footage is that is on the screen does not necessarily total up to total 80,000 square feet because those are not having all the classrooms listed. It has the sample classroom of 800 square feet. It does also have all the other circulation areas. Usually our facility programming has been very accurate in the past for any client, including uh, Harlandale ISD, where the architect who comes on board basically takes our facility programming with our drawings that we propose, and then they just make it beautiful based on the same square footages that you see on the screen. These square footages also have been discussed with the user group on March the 8th of 2016. So we have basically um, made sure that the principal's office also have a staff, uh, also has restrooms and all the code compliance that we have to um, uh, implement. One other thing that has happened um, citywide uh, City of San Antonio has uh, implemented International Building Code and International Energy Code, which uh, has a lot of stringent electrical requirement, meaning you have to have LED lighting, you have to have under the International Building Code, rather than typical uh, R19 for the roof installation, now you're at 38. The same thing with the walls, the same thing with the glass. So the building being more energy conserved also is gonna cost more as well. The other um, things that we have also looked at is phasing, what is gonna to happen to Carabelle, how is Carabelle is gonna get built, uh, what are the options for Carabelle, i.e. doing replacement, i.e. doing replacement and renovation, possibly keeping part, possibly doing the rest, and where the students will be housed while the project needs to be constructed. That being said, it is evident that the only option at this point is to uh, implement the facility of, Ele of Vestal Elementary School by constructing it uh, on the site that is vacant. And once that particular facility is finished, on the adjacent uh, site of the Vestal campus, then the students from existing Vestal get downloaded to the new facility, and then that allows the Carabell students to move into the existing Vestal. Okay, there's a question, Ms. Cassidus. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, so now I can ask a question on what I had on the yes, issue I had earlier. Okay, so my understanding is there's two wings there at Vestal that are fairly new, that have only been there for maybe 10 years or less, I wanna say? 10 to 15, yes. Right? Yes, yes, fine. So, I wanna know what's gonna happen with those, or what is the projected plan on possibly keeping those buildings, since they're not very old, and what would it cost the district in order to keep those? That's what I'm, my question is. Yes, so, ma'am. We have that as one of the options. Would you like me to fast track and get there, or would you yeah, like me to go through everything? That's one, that's, that's one of the options for Vesto. We talked about it at the building committee. Is, and we, let, let her, okay. she'll, she'll probably answer in, in a, in I'm a sorry, little. I didn't know. I do have that option. Okay. Yeah, that's that's going to discuss. That's one of the options. It's your decision what you would like to do, but there, that's one of the options. Okay. Um, at any rate, the drawing that you see on the screen is drawn on AutoCAD that basically shows the playground and it shows how the facility will be constructed. The reason you have courtyards in the middle is because from both sides of the facility you can get to kids to the courtyard and that basically gives better circulation. It shows the bus drop, 
of, it shows all the parking. It has given you more parking than you have currently in all cases and in all options. But this is one of the options which is basically temporary use of existing Vestal while we're working on the Carabell. Uh, as far as the replacement, what it is on the screen is gonna happen in all of the uh, options, meaning that you will have driveways, you will have all the grading, all the drainage, all the roof drain, anything that you have code compliance and problems with the project will be implemented and will be fixed. Therefore, this particular items that is on the screen, which for example says repair and replace 12 inch storm drain is going to be for all options. It's not just for one. The other thing that basically we have uh, implemented for your consideration is we have gone to the best quality of all for this pr uh, options that we are putting on the screen because this is again facility programming, giving the board option, giving the administration option which direction you wanna go. Uh, for example, the roof is the maximum years of roof, roof you could have, the best Benjamin roof that you could have. Uh, all the mechanical system or central system, a very high four pipe system, which is very energy conserved. Electrical, of course, is even more stringent because you have to have LED lighting above and beyond what we have done for you. Uh, the plumbing is going to be, again, gas, uh, water heater and gas boiler, which is, again, more energy conserved. And of course, the district-wide security for these two projects are already budgeted, so we're only providing conduit for those. As far as the cost also, one of the things we have done, we have included the cost of a lot of the stuff that are IT related, which we see that that's a separate budget as part of the bond referendum. Under the option one, you basically will have the entire facility replaced. Uh, and how that will work, it will be again on the adjacent um, land that you have at Vessel campus. You built it before you do any kind of a demolition. It will happen three years later by the time Carabell gets housed there and by the time Carabell gets uh, built and then download the students. Uh, we have incorporated all the ADA requirement. This is another option on Carabell uh, that we basically have on the screen for you to look at. Mr. Uresti had some suggestion that we also had gone back to the drawing board and drawn those as well. Therefore, it's called option 1A, and then the following slide is option 1B. What this basically does, it gives you different kind of bus drop-off and, and parking access. Uh, you will have two bus drop-off rather than one. So you will have everything one story to the right, to the center, except the part that is labeled as a two-story, which is just the classroom part because the size of the land is constrained to a point that we cannot have 80,000 square feet one story building. Option, option 1B is this is the uh, plan that Mr. Oresti um, uh, considered and requested that has been drawn and is put on the screen which flips what the prior option was. Uh, it basically gives you a different traffic uh, the concern was that basically you have an intersection that was very congested and how you would basically redo the bus drop off area and how you would reconfigure the building where you would have a better traffic consideration. And that's the other option that is on the screen. And it is intentional for playgrounds to be in between those wings so that from both sides of the wings you can have kids um, uh, come to the playground and play. Option number one on Carabell, the cons construction cost is about 20 million. Uh, what basically you see on the screen, I wanna make sure that we emphasize, this is a very much like a Cadillac of all. It has all CMU wall inside and out. It has brick face outside along with the CMU wall. It has the most uh, sophisticated mechanical electrical system. It has a cafeteria with the sound absorption where you can have a stage and you can have a special lighting. 
Um, but this is for your consideration to decide which direction you want to choose. One of the things that can be negotiated down is the fee for the architect. Due to the fact we have drawn a lot of the drawings for schematic design, we are in a negotiation with RVK Architect to bring the fee down from 6% uh, by giving them our right of use of our electronic drawings. So that will basically bring the cost down. That has been dialogued today, again, with them. The kitchen, civil, acoustical, landscape, irrigation, all the material testing, uh, again, that's a conservative number, the 3%, that, that usually with us, we have negotiated down substantially, but for budgetary purpose, we don't want to go to the absolute minimum right now and have you face what's happening at Seguin ISD, Northside ISD, Northeast and SAISD, where all of their projects are substantially over budget just because there was no programming facilitated. So that also, this number also includes um, Contingency of 5%, which as you know, we don't use your contingency, but is there for unforeseen conditions. This is if you do two of the campuses simultaneously. Option number two, it has uh, the pre-K wing I, that you want to I have a quick question on option number one. So option one, the option one, is that, yes. is that, is that for option 1A or 1B? Yes. Okay, yes. thank you. Yeah, the, the cost, the, So to build 1A or 1B, it's still that 22A, correct? Right. Okay. This, this number would be for 1A and 1B. Do you okay. Okay. The main difference between the two options has to do with the orientation of orientation. the Orientation. But they added a few more parking, that's what I was, but it's still pretty much, it's still the same price. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right, because you're doing it at the same All time. All right, thank you. Okay. But this is not the option you will be probably choosing just because you're not going to be doing simultaneous anyway. This is if you do two campuses at the same time. And my understanding is district doesn't have anywhere to house the kids. Mr. Chair, 